the suit of swords, the most maligned of the tarot suits, I think. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of history on the suit of swords uh, before I, which I haven't done with the other ones. And it's just because really, truly the traditional way of reading the wands and the swords or um, spades and clubs in cartomancy in playing card divination they are they they are the suits that are most negative you know they sort of represent struggle and i can i can't find a link from where golden dawn i i and if anyone knows i'm really curious the earliest place where i can find the golden dawn esoteric titles is in mcgregor mather's book t it's a very you can find it online it's really short it's worth reading just to understand sort of foundational texts of the golden dawn and the tarot that we know those are the first times I can see the keywords of the Golden Dawn. There, I, folks have theorized, and I and I, I think I thought this too, that the Golden Dawn based their card meanings on Atea's, but Atea's card meanings do not line up at all. Atea really was working from a, a specific French version of cardomancy. You know, it was playing card divination, and he just kind of took those keywords and applied them to the suits. And so in that way, they're linked. I do think that the Golden Dawn esoteric titles were connected to some kind of playing card divination in which the wands and the swords or the clubs and the spades were the negative or struggle bus suits. Um, and so that's why you see the suit of swords as you do today, and, and they're largely pretty negative. Um and the imagery. They're not they're not really neutral images for the most part at all. Um and yet, um in in the decades of the last twenty or thirty years, the elements have come to take a really central place for a lot of tarot readers, and they certainly did for me. And and they actually mean more to me than the Golden Dawn esoteric titles, which I've been sharing in these videos just for, as a matter of interest. Um, because I found that as a reader, kind of what I need from the cards is more, is more that, is the element over kind of whether the element is negative or not. So, you know, in playing card divination, this sort of like, here's the two kind of positive suits and the two kind of negative suits, and they work together. And that works in that way. Tarot for me, just because, maybe it's because there's the major arcana. I don't know. Maybe it's because we're just not living in the same world as when a lot of cardomancy systems were devised. I don't, it just it it just works better for me where I focus on the element over the the sort of negative positive thing because they can be both. And that I think expand like if if rather than having two suits that are negative and two suits that are positive, you have four suits that can be negative, neutral, and positive. I feel like you expand exponentially the specificity and clarity that you can get out of a reading. And so I, I guess that's why I'm less interested sort of in in the like suit of swords as a negative suit. The, the fact that it's the suit of air means more to me. And so this is just like, I guess, a little glimpse into sort of why what I do as a reader varies so dramatically from what's in the Rider-Waite-Smith. And it's one reason why I, I prefer uh, to read with pip decks a lot of the time, because I don't have to explain away those images. I have gotten good at it. You know, it's fine. Um, and I do love the Rider-Waite-Smith system. I mean, none of us would probably be here if that deck weren't here, and certainly not if the Golden Dawn did what they did, right? Or didn't do what they did. At the same time, as a reader, the pictures can get in the way for me. And if you go back and look at my first rumination on the suit of swords, you can see me struggling with that a little bit, um, and 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 sort of justifying the card meanings in the way that I was reading at the time. I know, for example, I used to say that the three of swords was kind of like, you know, the experience of like the sadder but wiser person you know having gone through something you know you you it was it made you sad but you came out the other end smarter um and i think that's fair and sometimes i read that way but i i have kind of revolutionized the way that i read myself you know again and i'm not saying this is a valid way it's just this is what i've learned and it really has changed the suit of swords for me and so in the past two videos when i did swans and cups I, you know, in many cases, I was able to say, okay, here's how I kind of reconcile the image with the way that I read the card. It's harder for me in the suit of swords to do that. 
Um, and so a lot of times I just ignore the picture. I mean, I just got to be honest with you. Um, but this is just me and I'm just sharing what I've, what I've learned and how I've become a reader. I do think I'm a better reader than I was when I made those videos because I kept learning. But it's different now. So, suit of swords, elements of air, and the element of air um, is my kind of like, I think it's my, my default mode um because it's it's mentality it is intellect and everything associated with it and so when i think about the suit of swords what i'm thinking about is what you're thinking what you're saying what you're learning what you're communicating um and um all of those things can cut <laughs> you know they can cut through so they can cut through the bs or they can wound and they can wound you um, and they can wound other people, or they can defend, they can protect um, as well. And so that's sort of how I connect the suit of air to the suit of swords in that way. I also tend to think of the suit of swords as pens, you know, um, and the, the thing of like the pen being mightier than the sword is always something that kind of lingers in the background of the suit of swords for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so um getting into the cards so the ace of swords is literally an idea it's like ping but it's like it's like the light is about to go off for ace like again when i talked about cups and and wands it's like the the moment before it's nascent it's like ping so like it's like someone has their hand on the light switch and it's like Ur! and but the filaments haven't ignited yet but it is like an idea in that way it's like the inkling of a notion is how I think of the eight of uh, ace of ace of wands. Um, the two of, I'm sorry, the ace of swords, the two of swords, which the golden uh, dawn called the Lord of Peace restored. Um, it's that image never really kind of made sense to me with that title, and it's probably one of the only ones that doesn't. Even the more nebulous titles. Um, to me, and the image really does support this, is this idea of being two of two minds of something. Um, now, I, in the in the past two videos, I've talked about how twos are like attraction and repulsion, and and to take that into mentality, it's like you you have two different ideas about something, and it's like which it's like it's a little bit of a tug of war and trying to figure out like how to reconcile them or how to connect them together or just to decide which is the right perception. Um, and so like that image of the person holding the two, so it's like, it is kind of like deciding, it's like thinking about weighing the possibilities. And that's kind of how I think about that card. Um, and it's trying to like, it's like the repulsion of the magnet in that two is a little stronger. And so it's like trying to push them together and like, you know what I mean? The three of swords, um, is sort of a, a, a growing notion or a growing idea, a growing ability to communicate. Um, because again, three is growth. Um, and of course, you know, so you're improving your communication, you're improving your thinking, or the thought is developing into something, you know, so that seed of an idea in the ace becomes an idea in the three. Um, and in the two, you kind of wrestled with how to get it there. So thinking about like inspiration in that way. Um, it has nothing, <laughs> it has nothing to me to do with that three of swords. And I really rarely would ever use that image of sorrow at all. I just don't. So this is where I've really departed from what I used to do, um, because it's just not neutral enough, you know, and that's my problem with the suit of swords and the Rider Waite Smith is just a lot of the other suits are fairly neutral and I can reconcile them with neutrality. It's really hard with the with the suit of swords, and I just I kind of ignore the images a lot of the time. Um, I'm trying to like think of a time when I wouldn't, and I just I can't. I just don't see it that way at all. Um, <laughs> I mean, when you grow, it can be painful. And I guess that's one thing I've said in readings is like growing pains. You know, as you learn, as you expand, you can have growing pains. And when you see the world in a new way, you can't unsee, you can't unlearn what you've learned. And that can sometimes hurt a little bit too, I guess. But it's just such a stretch. Context, you know. The Four of Swords works kind of well for me. So you know by now, if you've watched the other two videos, that fours are stable. And so you get a very stable image there. It's, you know, it's a crypt. Um, they called it the Lord of Rest from Strife. And I think Pamela Coleman-Smith drew that beautifully. 
And to me, it's having a stable mind. It is it is quiet. It is still. And again, it's it can be cons- it can be good because you're stable and like it's a rest. And so that I see. But it can also be conservatism. It can be being stuck in a rut. It can be not being willing to think new ways about things, of being stuck to your beliefs or your perceptions. And that refusing to recognize that just because your perception feels like reality, it's not actually reality. And so that's how the Four of Swords will appear for me a lot of the time. The Five of Swords um, was called the Lord of Defeat. Again, very negative. Um, But we know by now, if we've watched the other two, uh, that disruption can be good and it can be bad. And so it can be, after that stillness of the four, especially if it's conservative, it can shake up your way of thinking or communicating or what you say, what you do, what you're willing to learn. Um, Or it can just blast you. Like the five five of swords with the tower would be a really interesting combination because everything you... It's like... Um, Saul on the road to Damascus. You know what I mean? Everything you thought you believed just got blown up, for example. Uh, That combination would be really powerful. And sometimes that's good and sometimes it's not. So, sorry, I just have to take a message. Okay. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I do think that the image kind of can have that shake-up thing going on in it. Um, Six of Swords, uh, the Golden Dawn called the Lord of Earned Success. Um, and Sixes, again, are, are like if, I, if you've watched the other two, Sixes, for me, are, are represent beauty and good and rebalance, balance, all those lovely things. Um, and, you know, I think the Lord of Earned Success is fine. I don't, I'm uh, actually trying to replace the Six of Swords. Oh, in my mind, is that the boat? I have to look. God, I can't even remember it. So for me, it's literally like thinking good thoughts or like saying things correctly and well and balanced and like communicating effectively and and beautifully, you know, writing poetry or or learn or feeling good about what you're learning, for example, and just enjoying being a student. Um, It's so weird that I can't place the image. of the. This is how closely I, you know, I stay connected to the images of the suit of Swords in the Rider Waite Smith. Um, not going to be able to find it. As is always the case. It must be the bow, right? Yeah, it is. Um, it's fine. I mean, there's that that's such a mournful image to me. Um, but, you know, again, I don't read with much connection to the suit pictures at all. The suit of swords. The Seven of Swords was the Lord of Unstable Effort. And um, this, is, this is the one with the, the, the guy stealing the swords. It was sort of craftiness. Um, to me, this would be reevaluating what's important to you. You know, what, you, what do you think about this thing? What are, you, what are you really trying to say? What are you really trying to communicate? What are you really learning? You know, again, that seven is an introspection. It's a reassessment of self. And so all of the things that the swords represent for me are there. Um, the Eight of swords is the lord of shortened force um and eights again for me are our labor or effort um our work the work that you have to do and so it's putting the effort into communicating thinking learning whatever the doing is um that is is connected to it's it's like the struggle of writing the draft of getting the words out on paper or communicating the thing, being careful and working hard to communicate what you mean, being careful to like think about something in a thoughtful way and not letting the chaos happen. Um, which is one thing that I think you do get in the, uh, we can get wrapped up in our minds and in, and like living up here and doing all the work up here and not doing it out in the world. And I think that that's one thing that the Eight of Swords in this deck actually really kind of depicts nicely is just being stuck in your head. Because, and I do this, I get very cerebral and stuck in my mind and that can be really bad for me. And it can really arrest me in a, in a, in a really stuck way, so... The Nine of Swords is the Lord of Despair and Cruelty. Um, and again, like just super negative. Again, that image is so famous. Um, 
but the nine of swords for me is like it's mental exhaustion it is and so again i think you can see a little bit of that in the image it's like you have to work so you you, you're pushing so hard to figure it out and you can't figure it out or to say it or to or to learn it and you it's like when i was in college i had to take a math class and it made me cry because i could not do the work i'm just not my mind does not work that way and everything was a, a herculean task and i was exhausted after every test and that's kind of what the nine is. Um, and then the 10 is the finishing of that. And so it's the completed thought. It's the completed manuscript. It's the completed, it's your college degree. You know what I mean? Um, and you can feel a lot like that 10 of swords when you graduate. Like, you know, if you if you did it like I did, working full time, going to school full time, that's sort of how you feel. But it can be a good thing too, because you finished the job. Um. And so the courts, again, if you watch the other two videos, you know, the, the, the page is going to be a seeker of knowledge, uh, someone who's learning to write, someone who's learning to speak uh, or to learn a new language, you know what I mean, who's, who's curious about the world. The knight is a grad student, like going out and hunting for knowledge and experience. Um, the queen is facilitating it. She's She's... She's making. She's a teacher, maybe. She's a, a an agent, like a book agent or a, an editor. And then the king is is the embodiment of the thing. Um, just good communicator, probably a good boss, etc. So, those are my ruminations on the suit of swords. One more to go, and I'll see you then. Be good.